Amid the darkness and destruction of the latter eras of Battletech, many old designs would be revitalized. Not simply with weapons refits, but in completely new designs built in homage of their predecessor. In many of these instances, the idea seemed to stem from fixing or improving upon the original designs in ways that a simple configuration redistribution simply could not. In the Federated Sons in the 3130s, they would perform this task with a mech which is often associated with the Lyran Commonwealth, despite the fact that its real home is across much of the Inner Sphere. The Atlas was reimagined and reconstituted in this way. Robson Standard Battleworks, as well as General Motors, would be tasked by Host Davian with recreating this legendary Goliath in a new, dangerous form. The Atlas III. The original Atlas was a product of the Star League, as was its short lived successor and upgrade, the Atlas II. The original model would see a multitude of refits across the ages, from the first Atlas, the AS-7D variant, all the way through to the Bleeding Edge, the AS-8S and the AS-8K, both of which were produced by the Federated Sun's competitors, the Draconis Combine and Leering Commonwealth. Over most of this time, whether it be during the Succession Wars, where Davian initially inherited the Atlas and began using it in a widespread way, or into the era of the Federated Commonwealth and Breakup, they rarely utilized their own specific variants, instead focusing on their former relationship with House Steiner for improved models, or getting licenses to produce these alternative designs at home. The Atlas III's commission was the biggest true break from this malaise, and a step forward in innovation, manufacturing, and domestic pride regarding the Atlas in what could seem like an eternity. No longer would its neighbors dominate the Atlas in such terms. This 100-ton monster would be rebuilt, remade, reshaped into a form to signify this dominance, and its symbolism as a warrior for the sword and sun. Built in 3137, under the rule of the mad and very much despised Caleb Davian, the Atlas III would not be a weapon to simply sit in inventories or participate in war games. This juggernaut would not be used to simply swat pirates or dissuade brigands. No, the Atlas III was born into one of the most violent and unstable ages of mankind. In the years prior to its initial construction, the Republic of the Sphere would be formed in the latter decades of the 31st century, after the Blakist assault on the Inner Sphere. One of the great supporters of this realm would be the Federated Sons. But after Grey Monday, despite in many ways providing some form of assistance to the realm in question, even they would begin to pick at the edges of the Republic, wishing to retake some of their former worlds and the people within. The Swordsorn, a Federated Sons-backed rubble group who would work against the interior workings of the state were the best example of this friendly, but exploitative relationship. After the death of First Prince Harrison Davian, Caleb Davian, his successor, in 3135, would become increasingly hostile towards the Republic in a much more open capacity, producing any support its one-time ally received from them until the relationship was a husk of its former state. This, of course, further accelerated the Republic's decline. The Federated Sons would find themselves embroiled in conflicts along their borders, with multiple enemies. The now mighty Capellan Confederation, the Raven Alliance, as well as the Draconis Combine. The war with the Dragon started in two stages, an initial struggle, which was interrupted by the Draconis Civil War, and a second one, this one far more vicious, leading to the assault that created the Dragon's Tongue. On the world of Palmyra, leading his own forces and preparing to counterattack against the Draconis Combine, First Prince Caleb Davian would oversee the biggest military debacle in the history of the Federated Sons. What is now known as the Palmyra Disaster would take place. 
In this savage battle, the Federated Sons would lose 13 regiments of battle mechs, numbering over 1,400 mechs lost. This included many of these new steel behemoths, the Atlas III. These battle mechs undoubtedly would have fought on in the savagery of this conflict when given the opportunity. But given that the dragon did not destroy all of these forces in tactical battles, but with air and orbital weapons, inevitably the Atlas III would fall before the dragon's wrath, as did the rest of their forces. Worse yet, the Combine's offensive was successful enough that it would capture one of the two manufacturing worlds for the Atlas III, the incredibly important industrial engine that is Robinson. It is unknown if the Atlas III is now produced for the Combine in any numbers. Military catastrophes resulted after this as well, with so many officers and elite units killed from the AFFS, this left the rest of the state vulnerable to the predations of the Combine and the Capellan Confederation. The apex of this resulted in the fall of Tikhonov and New Citrus. This would not remain the case, and Julian Davian would become First Prince after the death of Caleb on Palmyra. New forces were marshaled and resources were mustered to bring the situation under control. It is without a doubt, even with production reduced, the Atlas III would be involved in the major fighting that would come. First, with the vultures that were the Capellan Confederation. Striking with fury and massed forces, including a large contingent of mercenaries, Julian would return New Citrus and the surrounding worlds back into the hands of the Federated Sons. During his time in the campaigns against the Capellans, he would lose his leg, and would manage to dictate terms for a ceasefire against his leal rivals. Now the Atlas III, along with a large inventory of battle mechs and weapons, have been prepared to stand against the dragon on New Avalon, the fallen capital of the Federated Sons. This is the face of the Federated Sons in the Dark Age, and now the Il Clan era. This 100 ton titan is the Sword of Vengeance that will be used as a breakthrough mech in the liberation of New Avalon. Being 100 tons, the AS7-D3 Atlas III has a series of advantages, but it also has an immense amount of weight it has to carry along with it for its base components and systems. To start with, this hulking machine would normally have a 10-ton frame, but it was instead constructed with Foundation 12X Endo Steel, reducing this to 5 tons, though at the cost of space within the machine for systems and weapons. This beast would also be defended against incoming attacks to the head using a new style of cockpit. Though it can still be decapitated by powerful single rounds, like from a ghost rifle, it is equipped with a 4-ton armored cockpit that will prevent normal critical hits from killing the pilot and destroying the command center of the mech, at least with a single critical result. The rest of the chassis comes with a series of inherent quirks as well, which impacts its performance in the game using the advanced rules. To start with, it has the distracting feature, due to the fear and intimidation that can be generated simply by its hulking and horrifying form, part of its lineage as an Atlas derivative design. There is a real terror that can follow in the wake of this giant. Next, it has protected actuators, a feature that protects its more sensitive moving components, particularly in the legs from tampering from infantry. Finally, it uses advanced onboard computer electronic systems, namely the Rander Com Marshall Communication System, as well as the Dalban Hi Res 5 targeting system. These electronic components in tandem, as well as the overall construction of the mech and its intended design, gives the AS7-D3 the command mech trait. This warrior is built for commanders. All in all, the Atlas III has a huge number of advantages, just through advancements made by Robinson and GM in their updated design. It's not hard to imagine, but the Atlas III is not a particularly fast mech, and its lumbering steps forward are neither particularly quick or graceful. It is powered by a traditional, tried and tested, 19-ton Velar 300 Fusion standard engine 
which gives it a maximum running speed of 54 km per hour, or 5 movement points in the tabletop game. This moves at the speed of intersphere breakthrough or assault formations. While this is not impressive by any means, it is what is expected strategically for this kind of battle mech in its intended role. The cooling system on board this new Atlas is a bit of a mixed bag. It comes installed with two double heat sinks, giving it a maximum sinking capacity of 24. This is not entirely adequate to cover its onboard weapon systems, so it must fire them in a bracketed way, but it is not inherently unworkable. In essence, it will either fire its ammunition-based weapons, or its energy-based weapons, but doing both would severely overheat the design. It is not an Alpha Striker. It is immediately noticeable that the D3 is equipped in a very different, albeit deceptively familiar way. Namely, it uses four lasers, an autocannon, and twin missile systems. Not unlike the original Atlas, though these offensive capabilities themselves are very different. Its primary weapon system is almost impossible to miss with the naked eye, as it carries a physically large, removable, Mirrodon Model RD Rotary Class II autocannon in its right arm. This rapid-fire cannon may not be able to deliver incredible damage in a single hit, but it can fire up to six times in a single turn, all the way up to an insane 25 hexes in-game. This can be used to rip through vehicles, VTOLs, aerospace assets, as well as to hammer enemy battle mechs in an attempt to crit-seek or simply erode away their armor after several rounds of fire. It has the benefit as well of having 90 rounds of ammunition, which means if it fires at maximum capacity, barring the likelihood of jamming at this rate of fire, it would have 15 rounds of constant fire, which is more than enough to terrify any enemy the Atlas III may face down. As if this weren't enough, at long range it is backed up by a StarTech 20-tube long-range streak launcher, which is a clan tech level weapon. Mounted in the right torso, this missile battery can and will hammer targets along with the rotary AC-2, and can do so for up to 12 turns. As it is a streak weapon, it has the benefit of not wasting ammunition on missed shots either. As things close into shorter range, the D3 is gifted with four Martel X Medium X Pulse lasers. These offer it the same range as a normal medium laser, but with increased accuracy and slightly more damage. It can fire all four while only overheating by one if walking. These weapons are its main close range defenses, though it does have an additional missile system to help these as well. Two of these are mounted in the left arm and two of these are mounted in the left torso. The last system to discuss is its Type 6 Streak SRM-6 Launcher, which is mounted in the left torso, and comes with 15 rounds of ammunition. While this will overheat the mech if fired with all four medium pulse lasers, it won't if one of these energy weapons is not fired in tandem. All the same, it is meant to crit seek at close range and add extra levels of damage to break down enemies or hit exposed plating. It too benefits from not wasting ammunition on missed shots. Every one of these systems is meant to work together in some way. At the short range bracket, the SRMs and pulse lasers work together to erode enemy targets. At long range, to break enemies down on their way in, they will be hammered by the RAC-2 and streak LRM-20. It can also mix and match weapons as needed, as long as this does not critically overheat the battle mech while laying into its target. There are mechs that may have more firepower, but the AS-7D3's firepower is balanced and can deliver horrendous blows to its opponents, knocking them over, criticaling them, knocking out pilots, or simply breaking them down into scrap. To underestimate this monster, much like its predecessor, is the height of foolishness. The defensive capabilities of its ancestor are legendary for the time of its creation. The AS-7-D3, however, is in a new age of warfare. This is not to say that it is poorly armored by no means, but it doesn't have anything particularly special to reduce the damage of incoming fire, such as hardened armor or advanced ballistics reactive armor, resulting in it having an impressive volume of armor 
but not something that goes beyond that. The Atlas III comes equipped with 19.5 tons of Star Shield Special Heavy Standard Armor, giving it 307 points to disperse across the mech to protect itself. This is extremely thick plating, but in the new age of warfare of the Dark Age and Ill Clan era, it is not what it once was, though it is above adequate most definitely. It does attempt to add technologies outside of the quality of its armor plating to add more defense, however. One of them being shields, which will be found mounted in both its right and left arm. These are used in an attempt to absorb damage that may be directed towards the mech when the pilot is aware of it. This adds durability to the arms as well, something that is very important given the volume of weapons that are found there. Another new technology on board as well is its Case 2 system, which protects its explosive materials on board, attempting to save the mech from catastrophic ammunition explosions. For the final piece of this armored puzzle, there is an invisible layer of protection that this Atlas has, which is its new, advanced, electronic countermeasure system, its Angel ECM. This protects the Atlas as an extra unseen barrier around it, reducing its opposition sensors' centric abilities and targeting. The Atlas III is what its predecessor was, an all-around 100-ton assault mech, which is heavily protected and relies on endurance to tire out adversaries while it hammers them with an assortment of weapons. Its long-range fire can, and will, rip into any targets with opened armor plating or any vehicles it sees or even may knock out mech pilots with repeated blows to the head. Against mech targets specifically, it may even get lucky through armor critical hits until its opposition is simply crushed by the volume of criticals. While it has weaknesses, and certainly can be outshot by other designs, it fills the command mech role well by allowing it to substitute itself into a multitude of roles in an assault formation as needed. A tactical battlefield commander would be well served by this enormous steel gargantuan. More dedicated designs do have benefits of course, but there is something to be said for being able to do just about anything, all while being extremely heavily armored. Is it a full successor to the Atlas Davian sought to replace? No. But is it a useful war machine in its own right? Yes. There is one altered design of the AS7-D3, which is the AS7-D2, and this was created to fulfill a more direct combat role, as opposed to the generalist command role of the D3. It removes its two torso-mounted pulse lasers, as well as its RAC2 cannon and ammunition. Its shields are also removed from the arms, all to acquire enough space to install the enormous, and the extraordinarily dangerous Clan Class 30 Hyper Assault Goss Rifle. This enormous, powerful cannon is one of the most feared weapons in the game, and is only enhanced yet further by a targeting computer being added to this system as well. Funnily enough, one of the best lance mates for an AS7-D2 is an AS7-D3. What a terrifying combination. The AS7-D2 and AS7-D3 battle mechs are important in the Dark Ages and now Ill Clan era's arsenal of the Federated Sons in this time of warfare, destruction, and uncertainty. When times such as these happen, people crave something reliable, something familiar, and something which they can weather the storm. It is not hard to imagine that commanders, and mech warriors in this new and rebuilding AFFS will look upon this dreadnought not with fear, but with hope that they may survive the battles to come against all their enemies. The Atlas III will be their shelter in this storm, and their sword to fight back against the darkness encroaching on the suns themselves. It will march upon the Capellan Confederation should they break their ceasefire, its mighty frame will crash into the comparatively less numerous Clan Snowraven forces like an avenging god of destruction, 
seeking to rip and tear until there is nothing left but the restored rule of the Federated Suns on their lost worlds on the Outworld's rim. And finally, this Titan, this remade weapon of devastation, will collide with his updated counterpart, the AS-8-K, which fights for the dragon as the armed forces of the Federated Sons launch their campaign of liberation, trying to seize the dragon's tongue. This weapon of war is not only in the hands of the AFFS, but in the hands of the experienced, capable commander that now heads it, Julian Davian, the First Prince. This man is a warrior who has fought on the field against Denai Liao, one of the most famed mech warriors of this new dark time. He will face down Toranaga, the warlord of the Combine, in a desperate bid to reclaim New Avalon and solidify his rule of the suns. In this coming battle, one coming soon, if Julian should fail to retake this capital, if the Atlas Threes that come with him on this journey and their pilots should fail to retake the capital, then it will be Julian Davian who will preside over a divided dominion. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I do updates very frequently, and you'll be happy with the content, I think. Much like before, as with the Tenshi video, I have included a link in the description of this video to Iron Wind Metals, which do make an Atlas III, if any of you are interested in procuring this particular mech. Also, a huge thank you to all the YouTube members for this channel. When you hit the join button and become a member, you take the extra step in supporting the content on this channel. And I can't thank you enough. Because this content is only possible because of viewers like you. And with that, I will see all of you in the comment section below.